So what this is doing basically is taking the waveform of the audio and then applying that to the automation. Can't believe that my life is a bomb in a box. I'm always right twice like a broken watch. You can watch me. And I almost forgot that it's 55 depths going right to the top. And you can use this for a lot of different things. You can use this for reverb. You can use this for delay. And when you use it for something like reverb, it's going to keep the reverb extremely tight to the automation so that your vocals only have reverb when they're playing. It's like almost like a side chain that has a very fast release, if that makes sense. Hello world. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about a really cool way to automate audio that I found inside of FL Studio. There are a lot of intricacies to the automation tool in FL Studio, and I feel like a lot of it gets overlooked. And the feature that I wanted to teach you guys about today and show you a little of is the analyze audio files inside of the automations. And it's a way that you can create automations based off of audio files, whether that's the audio file you're using for the automation or other audio files as well. And let's go ahead and take a look at it. So first things first, let me show you guys how you would go about creating this effect. Let's say for instance that I wanted to automate the format shift because I think that's a really cool feature. I would right click and create automation clip. And then now as you see, we have an automation. And then in the upper left, you're gonna go to articulator tools and then analyze audio file. Before we do that, to make the audio file a little bit easier to find, we're gonna go ahead and make a unique sample and then pop it in this folder I made called automation. You can call it whatever you'd like to, as long as you have somewhere where you can easily find the file. And now when I go to articulator tools, analyze audio file, it is going to bring me right to that folder I created. Now the first thing you're gonna notice right away is that this automation doesn't line up. And that is because the recorded audio has different tempo information than the automation is pulling from it. Basically the automation thinks it's 130 BPM when it's 200. And you could do some like super specific math to try to fix that. But the easiest way that I found to fix it is to just adjust this range number here to something like relatively high, like let's say 10. And then you can just adjust the time knob until you get like a pretty accurate representation. Like this should be about right. And it doesn't need to be 100% perfect, but the closer that you are to the actual audio file, the better the automation is going to sound. So what this is doing basically is taking the waveform of the audio and then applying that to the automation. And you can use this for a lot of different things. You can use this for reverb. You can use this for delay. And when you use it for something like reverb, it's going to keep the reverb extremely tight to the automation so that your vocals only have reverb when they're playing. It's like almost like a side chain that has a very fast release, if that makes sense. And you can use it for a bunch of different stuff. Like I said, when it comes to format shifting, there's a few articulation tools that you're going to want to work with to make the automation a little cleaner. And the first one being scale levels, because formatting the 50% bar is actually zero. So right now it's gonna format my vocals super low and then bring them high. And I'll actually go ahead and play that before I fix it for you so you can see what I'm talking about. So you're going to want to use some articulator tools to fix this and fit it more to what a natural format would be. So you can use scale levels. So you can go ahead and adjust the offset until it's around the 50% mark, like so. And that's going to make it so that the vocals are regular and then it's actually being pulled upward using the volume of the waveform as an automation. And then you can use the multiply to make it like a lot more tight to the vocals or a lot wet. And you can do this with any automation, by the way. This is just something we're doing with formatting specifically. And let's go ahead and see how different that sounds now. Can't believe that my life is a bomb in a box. I'm always right twice like a broken watch. You can watch me. And I almost forgot that it's 55 depths going right to the top. So that's a cool little effect you can do with formatting. And it's just one of the many ways you can use this feature in FL Studio. And I'm going to go ahead and show you another cool thing about it. If you go to articulator and then flip vertically, now you have the opposite effect. So it's actually pulling downward whenever the waveform hits. Can't believe that my life is a bomb in a bomb. I'm always running towards like a broken watch. You can watch me. And I almost forgot that it's 55 depths going right to the top. And there's a lot of different ways that you can experiment with this. 
whether you want to lower or raise the value, smooth them out, something like this is gonna give you extremely subtle effect. Can't believe that my life is a bomb in a box. I'm always right twice like a broken watch. And I almost forgot that it's 55 depths going right to the top. You can't top this, no, cause I'm hot as the sun. And let's say that you didn't want to add a whole nother automation clip. You wanted to work off of the same automation clip. What you can do is use this plus signal here and then head over to whatever you're trying to automate. Like let's say it's this reverb and then just tweak it. And now when you come into here, it'll have added the reverb to the mix. And you can go ahead and hit that plus so that it doesn't add anything that you're not trying to add. And now it has the reverb and the format shift, but I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the format shift using this X button here so that we're just working with the reverb. So that's the easy way to adjust what you're automating and that way you don't need to make multiples of the same automation. You can even duplicate that automation and then just do that into one of them so you have two of the same thing and it's a lot easier than having to constantly do that. But instead of using the same one right now, we're gonna go ahead and just create a fresh one from scratch to kind of give you guys the same rundown again. Once again, what you wanna do is right click, create automation clip, then left click the automation clip here and then click articulator tools and analyze audio file and we should still have that same audio file from before if there's an easier way that anybody knows to fix the time information so that the tempo is accurate let me know because for now i'm just stuck doing this method which can be slightly inaccurate and just annoying in general but i like to just shape it like that and then bring the offset back down and this will give us a more subtle reverb or we can raise it like this and kind of get more intense reverb but basically now the reverb is only going to affect the vocals directly when they hit and it's going to cut off right at the end of the vocals and that's obviously not always the effect you're going to want to go for but it's really cool to have this option and experiment with it in a lot of different ways so let's go ahead and listen to that can't believe that my life is a bomb in a box i'm always right twice like a broken watch you can watch me and i almost forgot that it's 55 depths going right to the top and as you can see, the reverb comes in and out only when the vocals hit. And like I said before, if you wanted to add something else to it, so it followed the same path, like let's say you wanted the stereo shaping to come into play, you would go ahead and head into the automation, click plus down here, and then head to your stereo enhancer and just tweak the knob. And now, as you can see, it affects the stereo enhancer as well. I think it's a really cool way to tightly control your reverb and stereo enhancing as well as any other plugin that you really want to experiment with. You can get really cool results using stuff like format shift and you can also get really cool effects on audio loops and beats by analyzing other waveforms and then applying that as an automation to the track and it's something that you can definitely just experiment with and find really fun ways to use it. There are a lot of other really cool automation features in FL Studio, but I figured I'd make this video because not a lot of people are familiar with this effect or know how to use it or what it is. So I wanted to give you guys a quick tutorial and just share my thoughts on it. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope this one helped and love you guys. Have a good day.